I don't think it's necessary at all. We can't sustain as a country $100 million a day of lost economy that can never be recovered. The government's borrowing more and more and more and more money. And when they were in opposition, they used to criticise John Key and Bill English for what they borrowed. But Labour has borrowed far more than that. Everywhere else in the world is abandoning lockdowns as a tactic, but it's the only tactic this government has got. Lockdowns and their push for vaccinations. And as we've seen in Israel, in Iceland, in the UK, vaccinations aren't all they're cracked up to be either. So if the government's entire strategy involves locking down a half of New Zealand's population and starving the rest of any business that comes out of that region, then it's a recipe for impoverishment for this country. What the media missed in their absolute rush to protect Susie Wiles as a spokesperson that they've all shilled and pimped out around the entire country and the government ministers who rushed to defend her is that she's a rank hypocrite, which was the entire point of what our, our story was about, that she's told everybody else not to talk to your neighbours, not to extend your bubble, not to uh, go on, you know, massive tours around the city on your bike. The, the entire premise of everything that she has said uh, about staying home, staying local uh, and staying in your bubble was completely ignored by her, but it's just been excused away uh, by a complicit media and, uh, and government ministers who are protecting one of their own. And when you contrast that with the way other people have been treated for breaching lockdown, where you've had people who, who haven't even breached lockdown. They've had a mask exemption and been pepper sprayed in the face while on their knees, you know, as ordered by the police. You've got uh, people in Silverdale being accosted for uh, shopping together. Um, you've got excessive police uh, actions against lots of other people. You've got enforced borders all around the place. But Susie Wiles gets a free pass. It was her rank hypocrisy. Now, I happen to agree with the fact that you can go and do what you please and drive around and, and exercise or do whatever, see your mates, all of those sorts of things. But Susie Wiles has been one of the most vocal people who has criticised anybody who's done that. And then when she did it herself, she found a convenient excuse and some enablers in the government to, to justify her position. No, her explanation's not legitimate. She's on record as saying, don't ex extend your bubble. You know, we put people at risk by extending your bubble. She supported the Prime Minister, don't talk to your neighbours claim. She supported lockdowns. She supported staying local. She supported all of these things. And yet when it suited her, she went and did whatever she wanted. <laughs> Susie Wiles should not be used by any media anymore. I mean, I, I've been uh, vilified uh, for daring to tell the truth about her. Um, and, you know, people are calling for me to be taken off air and not be published and, you know, tried to smear Judith Collins with an association with me, all for the, the terrible crime of telling the truth about a rank hypocrite. Um, I think that Susie Wiles should just disappear. She's, she's been proven to be a hypocrite. Hypo hypocrisy in politics and hypocrisy in public se servants and hypocrisy in those who are telling us how we should be living our lives cannot be tolerated. So we either endorse what she did and remove all the restrictions on moving around, which is what the government has given her a free pass for, or um, we just ignore what she's got to say from now on because she's a rank hip hypocrite. Because when people get power that it is greater than what they've normally exercised or experienced, they're very loath to give that up. And they've been given the power to essentially stop and search almost anybody at any point and use the public health orders as an excuse for them to do that. And every organisation has a, a whole bunch of bad eggs. And when you give bad, bad eggs, uh, power, then they, uh, they overstretch themselves, they abuse that power. And this is uh, one of the biggest problems that we've got in New Zealand, is that right from the get-go, from the very first lockdown, the police 
broke the law. The government broke the law. And they excused it away saying, oh, but it was very important and it was for all of our health. The bottom line is this, we have a set of laws uh, and we need to adhere to those. And the government and the police and the, and the other arms of the state are exceeding their authority, but they seem to get away with it. New Zealanders need to wake up because every, t every month that goes by where the police and other authorities are exceeding their actual statutory authority, is another step closer towards totalitarianism. No, it's not justified at all. For a start, the, the Wanaka couple uh, have had a, an exemption to travel outside of Auckland's borders. Now, that exemption to travel, once you're outside the border, doesn't stop you going anywhere else. So this, this fellow is a, a horse trainer. He could have legitimately had a a client in, in Cambridge or Hamilton or Morrinsville or somewhere like that, gone to see those people or see that, that horse that he's looking after. Once he's outside of the border, he can do as he pleases. It's rather strange that they haven't been charged, yet other people who have bre breached the so-called borders of Auckland have been charged almost instantly. So it's, it's going to be very hard for them to, to try and prosecute them on, on that matter. But Again, we've got this differentiation between the elites, which is people like Susie Wiles who can do what they please, and somebody who isn't one of those elites, and they get uh, absolutely attacked in the media. The media hunt down their relatives, they hunt down their businesses, uh, they try and name them, they try and shame them. And then the, sec the, the, the third thing that's alarming about this is the, the snitch culture that's developed in New Zealand and an us and them uh, behaviour where it's Auckland versus the rest of the country. And it's, it's frankly disgusting and it just shows how far we've slipped down the slippery path to totalitarianism where neighbours are dobbing in mates and uh, relatives are dobbing in relatives and we've almost got a secret police culture happening where people are using the government's snitch line to, to rat on their neighbours. It's disgusting, you know, it, it's something that we shouldn't be encouraging here in New Zealand.